So the last video oh. I did, uh, last live stream, I, I cut out all the fat and, um, and then re-uploaded it. So it was higher quality video. Uh, I, 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 I master, remastered the audio so the audio is good and I cut out all the fat. So there's nothing but talking about blueprints and layout on this video. And I, it, that's why it took me a little bit longer to upload it. Um, but you, I'm gonna, you can kind of see the, the live, the live remastered, okay, this little logo that I've made, it's, uh, on, gonna be on the remastered videos from the live streams that I've done, so you can tell the difference, okay, so if you watch the, the one without that logo on it, okay, then you know that's the actual live stream, so there could be buffering issues, and then of course there's the interactions with the community, and we get off topic sometimes or whatever, but the when it's when it has this logo on it, it's been remastered, so it just talks about that subject. That's it. That's all. Um, plus, it, it gives you I've know like uh, really much much better quality. Watch out for that uh, logo, okay? That uh, live remastered. That's what that means, okay, guys? So USG.com uh, is obviously the uh, CGC. You can get drywall. You can get. Um, different um, like tape finishing products, right? Uh, like T-bar products, ceiling products, stuff like that. Um, you can always browse these websites and get familiar with the materials and stuff yourself. Uh, basic, basic materials would be like, uh, let's check out uh, dry drywall panels, for example. Okay, so standard sheetrock or uh, standard gypsum board panels, okay? The, look at this, AR fire code, uh, C panels uh, with abuse, so that's abuse resistant, so abuse board. Uh, you'll find those things like four feet up in hospitals, sometimes like in busy traffic areas in, in like certain certain places or whatnot, right? Uh, type X, okay? Uh, so this is uh, abuse resistant and type X, so fire resistant. So when, if it's type X, it's also uh, fire resistant. This is five eighths, right? Uh, this, I don't, don't, don't think I've ever really seen type X half inch. I think you need to go five eighths to get that fire rating. Uh, is, have you ever seen half inch type X or I don't, I don't think it's a thing, but we, it's always, you always got to go five eighths when it, when it comes to fire, right? So there we go. There's, um, uh, sheetrock brand fire code C. Uh, so C gypsum panels that provide superior fire resistance for ceiling and column. Okay. So uh, um, uh, fire rated, so five eighths fire rated to a uh, C for a uh, ceiling board. And it's usually got like a, yeah, see, like you can tell the colors of the tabs here. Let me just kind of zoom in there. They'll have different colors like uh, yellow, I think usually for ceiling board, uh, or fluorescent green or something like that. I can't remember. It doesn't look like it actually is that different here on this brand. Look at that. So brand flexible. Look at that. So quarter inch flex panel. That's a pretty. Uh, that's a normal. A normal panel. Uh, just regular five eighths type X for fire reading. Um, this is your dense glass, right? Your glass mat. So you'll use glass mat for um, like exterior sh or shaft liner. Which one? This is one inch for shaft liner. So it's also going to be twenty four inches wide instead of four feet. Okay. Um, and then you got your glass mat mold tough. Uh, abuse resistant type X panels, uh, five eighths. It comes in half inch as well. Uh, tapered edges, tapered edge. Uh, so this is with abuse, moisture, and mold. Uh, very high. So in this one here, right, the VHI fire code X panels. Uh, this is uh, glass mat type X panels with very high impact moisture and mold resistance. So this. You'll 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 use this stuff on like exterior walls, and then um, um, like you can use it uh, behind to tile, and uh, like even uh, even I've seen them use it in like uh, like uh, showers, and you put Dietra and tile as well. I've seen it. Um, uh, you can get th this stuff for roof roof sheeting as well. It goes underneath the insulation. Um, but you can't tape and paint this stuff, okay? Just to be, be aware, you can't tape and paint uh, glass mat, right? So look at that. We got, uh, what's this here? So sheetrock 
brand gypsum panels, three eighths and a quarter inch. So that's just thinner stuff, smooth, square edge, tapered edge, square edge. And then you got your mold, to, like your blue board. We call it blue board. Um, I've seen it green as well. It could be green or blue, uh, but yeah, that's for bathrooms. Okay. You, cause you can, you can tape and paint this stuff, right? So, uh, this is good stuff. Five eighths, half inch. You can get it in a half inch as well. Um, liner panels, right? So look at that mold liner panels. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. what do we got here? So there's lots of different kinds, right? Of board, uh, but you don't really need to be an expert to in this to know you're not going to be using, there's just like pretty much standard, um, um, like, you know, for bathrooms and stuff, mostly we're going to use half inch. Okay. Mold board, uh, blue or green board. K. Okay. Uh, regular half inch. Um, we got five eighths type X, just always get type X, five eighths type X. And that's, uh, you know, and then you'll, uh, specialty boards would be abuse board, uh, or uh, cement board would be specialty. I wouldn't call glass mat specialty because it's a used a lot. So it's a standard sheet at the, like the, this glass mat, you can get like fluorescent green. They're like fluorescent -y green panels or like fluorescent -y yellow. Um, either or, it's the same thing. Those are for like exterior walls. There's some that that uh, are for the roof panels. They'll say uh, they'll say on it, right? Which which it's for. Uh, but obviously, if it's for the roof, it, it'll probably be on the roof. You're not gonna. It's not gonna be on your job site, like inside. For you know, if you know you're gonna need it. Um, it's ultralight. I don't know why everything ain't ultralight now. It's so ridiculous to me. Okay, you got Type X ultralight. Uh, so I don't know why everything is an ultralight. It's it's beyond me. I, I still haven't figured that one out yet. Um, it's like thirty percent lighter than regular sheets. So I'm I'm. It's always like uh, it's always making me wonder, right? So well, I I don't understand it. But why they still make regular? Does anyone know the answer to that? Why they why they still make regular board when they got ultra ultralight? It's it's so weird to me, right? Uh, what's this here? Cavity uh, cavity shaft wall. Uh, is this what I think it is? Oh, elevator shafts and stuff. Uh, I want to check this out a little closer. Uh, there you go. There's the there's the cement board right there uh, with edge guard, uh, right? So strong water durable uh, tile base with enhanced uh, proprietary edge performance, preventing uh, spin out and crumbling, right? Uh, this is this is good stuff for uh, tile backer, right? Um, not necessary for all tile though okay so you like i said in bathrooms okay you don't need to use cement board just use mold resistant board everywhere and you can tile right to that even okay um i, I like i said people use detritus sheeting all, all as well you know it, it's all good uh so look at that abuse and mold resistant. like i've never seen this before it's super uh Super tile, which is fiber, uh, fiber rock brand tile backer board, unique fiber reinforced gypsum product that includes water resistant core for supreme durability and superior performance in wet and dry environments. Uh, fire code, mold and mildew resistant. Uh, you can get it, yeah, it's five eighths, three foot and four foot. Oh wow, interesting. I wanna check that one out a little bit more too. So now we're getting into specialty, right? So this, um, What's this all about? Oh, this is the... Oh, I don't, I don't want this. I don't want this, close this. Come on, man. Yeah, it's shaft wall. Yeah, that's what I thought. So what it was showing you there was the studs then. I was like, what the heck? That that drawing on the other page was just weird, okay? Um, but yeah, these are two foot wide uh, sheets. So the, the studs are, are special so that it's kind of, you can drywall the inside of a shaft, right? And just you just slip the, the drywall in and it, and it snaps in. It's pretty easy. And then the track that goes all the way around is like an L it's like an L track, okay? So obviously the bigger piece goes on the inside and you just put the ends up. You screw through the draw, draw, uh, board into the steel that way, okay? 
pretty straightforward. Um, and then when you're doing your your um, your sheets, you don't have to put screws in the in the studs. In fact, you don't. You put screws at the top and through the track, and at the bottom in the track. That's it. Okay, you don't put screws down the the down the studs. Okay, it's simple as that. And they just they snug in the the stud snugs up tight. I thought it would show you a stud. That's why it, I wanted to open up this page, but it doesn't. But we can get back to that some other time or later on. So this right here, interesting. I wanted to see what this is about. If I can... Uh, it doesn't really... So let's see here. This stuff right here. So unif uniform composition provides both strength, water, used in both wet and dry areas throughout the home. Ideal under tile, stone, vinyl, hardwood flooring. So this is like a, a floorboard too. So laminate flooring, carpeting, and countertops. Huh. Superior tile bond, three times industry standard, uh, free of resins, adhesives, and solvents that might stain a vinyl floor. Provides a smooth, flat, paintable surface for wall applications. Easy to cut, fast, and install. Interesting. So you can get it quarter inch, three eighths, so, um, five eighths. 042, I don't understand, 0.042, that's weird, uh, but you can get it in three, three foot, four, okay, this is, so these are the sizes, four by four, three by five, four by four, four by eight, three by five, three by five, four by eight, three by five, Four by eight. So that's some weird sizes. That's that's also some weird sizes. But no, interesting. Well, loads of more, I suppose. I don't know what what, what more there would be, but uh, oh yeah, then the underlay and all that. But we don't really do any of that. We're worried about walls, okay? We don't do floors so much. But it's good to know, like uh, uh, the difference, like the differences, right? But yeah, if you go to, let's get this jump down to joint compound. The the main ones are, we use yellow, okay? Yellow for uh, bedding the tape um, uh, and like green for coating, basically, okay? Uh, uh, there, I like the all-purpose blue for you in bathrooms. So when you're using mold board, the blue board, I like to use the blue mud, the all-purpose for the bathrooms. It's just a little stronger. Um, then the green. Okay. So I, I like that. I, of course I go, I embed, uh, yeah. Abuse board is for impact resistance. That's right. Yeah. So when you like in hospitals, for example, you know how the hallways all get four feet up in schools when you're doing schools, four feet up gets all abuse board. Um, you know, it's just that stronger wall doesn't get dented, uh, as easily. Um, it's just, it, it, is, it is what it is. It's super heavy. It's super dense, super heavy stuff. It really sucks uh, for uh, to install and to like carry and stuff. It does suck. So, and it's the whole reason why I don't do schools or hospitals anymore. Because I'm just I don't want to lift it. Well, that and all the rock soul. <laughs> all right, I don't know what this is all about, but this is weird. Uh, we don't uh, we don't really use uh, these kinds of boxes or bags. Okay, we use. We use big boxes. Um, so you, this this twenty, the number is the is the, is the number of minutes it takes to set. Okay, so the lower the number, the faster the set. So if you want to get, I use fast set powder, and I'll add it in to existing mud, or I'll just get, uh, or I'll get some fast set, and that's what I'll use for patches, repairs, like big dents or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I'll use fast set. Um, if you have a limited budget or limited time here, you can also mix some fast set into your mud to help it dry quicker. Hey, what's up, Bill? How's it going, brother? Good to see you, man. Uh, red, usually like red would be like a super light, um, like for skim coating and stuff like our higher, like we use that for more like a, like a higher end, I guess I would say like we would add that on top of the green. Or like a or like a skim coat. I skim coat with anything. I don't matter. But uh, you got uh, look at that Durabon ninety. That's a that's a popular product. Uh, these are weird numbers. Like we, we, I think here we go. These, anyways, 
Cinco Cinco is not too bad. Uh, it I like the the one thing I like about the Cinco mud is uh, your first coat is it dries white, but when you're using when you when you're, when you're using green for your second coat. It dries like a tan color, so you can look in, at a wall and see where you've done and stuff. But like I said, this the all-purpose, the blue, is what I use in bathrooms. Uh, I don't know if that's like, that's just what I do or what I've been taught, right? Um, yellow for uh, taping, green for your coating, okay? And, and also using yellow when you're doing your first coat on uh, corner beads or setting your corner beads, sorry, and trim. Right, so basically, with the plastic trim tech, I will staple that on, okay, and then I'll coat it with yellow, right? First coat, this is the yellow's got more glue in it, and it's stronger, um, it's harder to sand, and then I'll finish coat with green and uh, make it all nice, you know what I'm saying? But uh, here we go, there we go. This is basically it right there, okay? So you got uh, yellow and green, two most popular. Basically, all you need to tape is yellow and green, okay? Um, you can use this right here. This all-purpose is good, like I was saying, for uh, bathrooms like where there's more water. I, I like to use that. This is a bit stronger than the green, right? Um, and then, yeah, there's different sets, okay? Like I was saying, fast sets or whatever <clears throat> that you could use for damages, uh, repairs, like touch-ups and stuff at the end, okay? So a lot of times when your drywall is being delivered, the delivery guys will de will bang it up, break a corner. Uh, you got a rookie doing installs, will break like break a, a bevel or something, you know. And 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 what you'll do is you'll go ahead and pre-fill that stuff with fast set. Okay? You pre-fill your big gaps or um, like it, sometimes like walls just like especially when you're drywalling on wood, your uh, your corners are gonna have like like you know big gaps. <laughs> you know it's just uh, wood, right? So you just go ahead and you pre-fill as much as you can with fast set before you go in and start taping, okay? Um, and and then of course for patches and stuff like that, it's it's just hard. It's just hard, right? You can it's nice to use. So good stuff, good stuff. And we're getting through here. Joint tape. Uh, basically, uh, what I use is the two-inch tape. Okay, you got your your uh, paper tape, five hundred foot five hundred foot roll. Um, I. So the the C, the Cinco stuff is is okay, okay. I don't mind using it, um, but if if you're gonna go like the certain certain teed is is way better quality, okay. Certain teed is better quality. Um, it, it you don't get that nice coloring, right? Yeah, no, you don't. Uh, not typically, you don't get a discount typically. Uh, or charge them it sometimes if they're getting out of hand you'll have a talking you'll tell them and then you know their boss will give them a talking to uh, but we have this one company here in Edmonton they're called I'm not gonna say what they're called it's, it's hard not to know but we but they're called Pacific West but we call them pack worst pack worst okay because they're all their their deliveries are awful like they're always the, the sheets are pretty beat up when they when they do when they deliver so um, not all the time, but I mean, I did apartment buildings with them for years straight and every single sh unit, the sheets were beat to hell. So <laughs> like we're talking broken, big, broken parts like, oh man, it's brutal. And when you're lifting a 12 foot sheet above your head and it snaps because, you know, like that's a real piss off, you know? Um, but yeah, I always use paper joints. Sometimes I'll use the mesh uh, for um, certain things. I think that's what this is here, the fiberglass, right? Yeah, I'll use it for like, um, sometimes on repairs, okay? Like if we're patching in a piece, I might use it. Um, it's, I don't know, I don't really know. It's self-adhesive. Um, exceptional joint strength, fiberglass joint. I'm not sure why, um, I, it's weird. Like I, I've never really been told the difference uh, between these two. So if you guys know, uh, the difference between the, like, the, I, I just think the paper tape is probably a better product. Um, I've seen jobs where they've used nothing but this mesh fiberglass, too, like when I was a kid. I haven't seen it since uh, being an adult, but when I was a kid, I seen contractors uh, do that, and that, that, was, that was normal to me. And then coming out west and working all the time, you never, ever, ever, ever see this stuff. Always paper tape, so... Um, and I get it. I like the paper tape by far. Uh, I can kind of see, like, with this mesh tape, you can see, uh, 
Um, oh man, if that no no metal is that's different, a whole different story. Yeah, if they were damaging metal metal siding, that would be a problem. That would be a big problem. That's a finish like that's a finished product. Like you know, drywall ain't a finished product, so. I get it. They're just rough and, and it, it, come on, it doesn't take, no offense, drywall delivery guys, but it doesn't take a genius to, to deliver that stuff. It just takes a strong meathead, you know? So. All right. One more thing I want to talk to you about is just, so, just a little bit on corner beads, just so you guys are familiar. Okay. Um, so you got your, your BeadX brand paper face uh, corner beads, okay? That's um, what we use out west here. We don't use metal corners. Uh, metal corners are a real pain in the butt. Uh, it doesn't, it's not going to show you pictures anyway. All right, that's fine. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, so you can get um, 90s for outside corner. You can, you can get 90s for inside corners even. Um, you can get, uh, uh, there's this, see this straight flex here? I, I wonder if they got my brand. I like the 360. So you got, yeah, so wide flex 400. Uh, <clears throat> straight flex uh, 90 paper face. Uh, straight flex original drywall inside and outside flex. Uh, I, or maybe this is the one I'm, I use the 300. It could be a 300. I thought it was like three, six, 360, but, or 350 what I use, but I guess this, this is it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is for those like 45s inside court, like inside and outside 45s, you know? <clears throat> And then there's another one. There's a brand I bought at Home Depot that's it's a little bit different. So what I've done is I've used it for uh, corner bead, exterior corner bead on bulkheads or clouds that are high up that no one will ever touch or anything if I've run out of corner bead. It's actually quite handy. Uh, it's a smaller, it's just like the same size, like an inch and a half by inch and a half. So it'll be like, you know, an inch and a half on either side or whatever. It's um, super handy, actually, super handy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just it. There's trim tech, uh, plastic as well. Um, I don't know if that should have kind of been in there, but we don't really get into the textures or primers or patching or repair too much. Um, but there's plastic as well, right? Like, um, trim tech, we call it. So you got uh, tear away, uh, which, which is, uh, I show you guys that all the time that goes around the inside of the windows and stuff like that. Or, uh, or when a wall goes into concrete. You know, or it's like CMU, concrete block, or concrete wall. Anytime drywall goes into something, you'll use uh, plastic to separate it, okay? You don't put the drywall into that. You always stop the drywall quarter inch to three eighths back from the CMU or whatever it is, okay? And then you uh, put the tearaway in there, okay? And the reason why I call it tearaway is it's got a, a lip on it. You coat it all and you finish it all, sand it all, and at the end you just tear it off. Tear off the thing and it gives it a beautiful line. You know, it's simple as that. Um, you can get that flat so that it doesn't have a, a, a part that goes in. So say it's too tight, right? You can get it flat as well. That just goes on. But it's better to get the one that's, that goes in behind the drywall. You know, it's just a better product. Um, what else? What else do we use for plastic? Um, I think that's pretty much the most popular. Oh, there's... Um, like even for like the tops, like you can get caps as well for the boards, okay? Uh, like trim, like, you know... Um, like a L, L bead or whatever. Um, but even like when you're going up to T bar, okay, you always stop your, um, your board down quarter inch, the three eighths below the T bar for tear away. Okay. Cause same thing, tear away, tear away, tear away. Every time drywall changes to a different, uh, like your substrate changes, you have to use something to separate that. Okay. You can't just use flat tape. You got to use plastic. So simple as that, dude. So that's, um, that's the, the drywall side of it. But then Bailey Metal is where we pretty much get all of our steel stud from, okay? And steel stud is pretty simple. There's not, there's not like, you know, the, just knowing the different sizes, right? You, you're like, what you're working with? Anywhere from inch and five eighths to eight inch, basically, is pretty standard, okay? Uh, and, and you eight inches for exterior walls. Um, 
six inch you can use for exterior walls. I, I've never seen anything lower than six inch for exterior walls. It's usually six or eight. I've seen 10 even. Um, and then you're using 18 gauge, 16 gauge, uh, even 15 gauge for uh, exterior walls. Uh, your demising walls, anything up to like 18 feet, you, uh, you're you good with 25 gauge. You know, some places are, um, I think when you get up to 18 feet, you gotta switch to 20 gauge. Uh, which is fine. It depends on what you're doing. Like, like this is where the the trick is, okay, guys. So we use 25 gauge, six inch for most demising walls because the 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 I beam will be at like 16 feet or lower, okay. And so that that's where the slot track goes is on the, uh, is right at that I beam, okay. And then you got a two foot piece on top, so your expand three quarter inch expansion joint at the slot track, and then you got like it's would be technically a bulkhead on top of that, so you can use all light gauge for that. You know what I mean? But if it's going straight up 18 feet, then you you, you might have to use um, 20 gauge, okay? Check the codes. Um, yeah, so I was just talking with a, a, a somebody in the in the comments who just made me think about that. I'm like, I don't know, I've never really, never really learned about that before, but I, if, if that is in fact of code, then the reason why we're, we're getting away with it is because the I-beam is, is two feet below the, the Q-deck, right? So. But if you're doing interior partitions and stuff like that, it doesn't matter. You can use 25 gauge, 18 feet long. It doesn't matter. Ah, oh, sorry, get itchy here. Yeah, but yeah. Most of the metal we make, like, better, this is Bailey metal right here. So shout out Bailey. Um, we get most of our our metal stud through these guys here in Alberta, anyway. But if we let's go to products. Look at that comp slab. Um, clips. Fasteners I'm, I'm surprised by. Let's see, we're talking about shaft walls. Let's see what, what they got here. Eh. Yeah, that's it. This is the stud for shafts right here. <clears throat> right, you can see um, this is where the one inch go for the for the liner panel goes in. And uh, uh, if you can, if I can, find, there's the track. So here's the track. You literally, this even got tabs. See the tabs there? So that's probably two. They're probably two feet uh, apart. Um. Anyway, so you push. You would put the stud in. And you all, you're gonna screw the the sheet. This is gonna be the outside right here. The the short lip is gonna be on your side, the outside, and the the wide is on the inside. So you push the board in, and it slides into the stud, and then the studs just kind of like you know whoop, 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 into each other. And then you put your screws through the bottom and top. Okay, this is your bottom and top track. You don't use um, there's no slot track in 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 this. So um, if you're in a, in a deflection situation, you probably just don't screw in the top. That's what I would what I would suggest, right? It's all a free floating system. You just screw it, screw the stud, uh, the board in the bottom, just to kind of keep it in place a bit. But yeah, yeah, the studs are pretty straightforward. Th this is where it'll slip in. You can put screws through it if you want, okay, to keep the board in place or tack it in if you need to. But like I was saying, you don't really need to. But that's the system there. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, and steel stud, yeah, like the, the most important thing you want to learn, like, uh, is you're, you got studs, okay? The, the color system, I don't, uh, let me think. I don't remember the color system off, off by heart. Um, I think uh, red is, uh, red's uh, 15 gauge, uh, orange 16, or the other way around. Uh, green is 18, uh, white is 20, and uh, I don't know, 25 is, uh, I don't know, 25 gauge is just so easy because it's light gauge, it's the only, only one that's flimsy, so uh, that's pretty straightforward, but. <clears throat> uh, let's see here, accessories, let's check out accessories. I'm thinking like, yeah, so res bar, so resilient bar, okay, so, um, 
it, that is for sound reading, okay? And you put it every 16 inches up. You put one at the top, one at the bottom, and then every 16 inches up. Uh, if you can tell, it's got a tab, and it's oh, you always screw in the bottom, the bottom, okay? And the, and it always it, it, it does matter which way it goes, okay? But you can clearly see on this picture that the it like it faces up, okay? Pointing it up so that it, it like the part that's loose will be at the top. Okay, and you put the screws in the bottom. Every single one needs to be screwed in on every stud, okay? Uh, yeah, RC plus. That's what that's what we they call RC plus. So resilient channel. Okay, that's for sound rating, okay? Um, let me see if we can get a better look at it. Not really. But Hopefully you guys can kind of see this just to kind of give you an idea of the installation real quick here. Come on, baby. We're not going to watch this whole thing. But yeah, you see that? How it's going you how it faces up, okay? That's the that's how it's done. Man, I need to reach out to Bailey. I should do videos for them. Like this guy's using an impact gun to install drywall for crying out loud. And I was talking, and Bailey did say I could have a tour of the factory after COVID, so I should uh, reach out to them again. I would like to get a tour of the factory and do a and and show. Yeah, I, like, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna put Bailey on the list. But yeah, res res bar. That's that's what that's what res resilient channel looks like. Just give me. Let me get my notepad. God, I have a busy week ahead of me. I'm trying to approach people, and it goes on the ceiling as well, right? Okay, I got Bailey's on the list. All right. Ah, that's too funny. And I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure how well it works either. I'm not. I'm not too sure. Uh, I think going double layer five eights and using raw and using rock or insulation is is better. Um, I was considering it in here, but yeah, I went double layer five eighths and green glue, the soundproofing glue instead. And yeah, it, it, cause I got the 16, 16 gauge, six inch steel stud. And then it's all filled with R20. And then the, it's also a uh, poly cause it's exterior wall. Uh, and um, everything's cocked like uh, the Chemtron. Like sealed, everything sealed, blah blah blah, and uh, yeah. See how you just overlap it too, right? You never, you always has to overlap, and you can't like you have to be careful. You're not, it's not going to be flimsy because you have to be able to screw it in. So I overlap it properly, and um, yeah, uh, always make sure it goes past a, a stud, right, or lands on a stud, right. You don't want it to stop uh in the middle between two studs because then when you're trying to screw it in right it's not going to work unless it's overlapped properly right unless you have another one overlapping to the other stud or something okay <clears throat> but what i do so when we when we do big long hallways with this stuff or we do like a hotel where it's in every single party wall i have a stick a marking stick so i'll mark um every 16 inches okay i'll mark it on a stick and that's what I do. I put the stick on the ground and mark, 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 middle, mark, 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 end, mark, mark, mark. That's it, okay? I don't hold my tape measure out and mark it. I even do that when I'm on the ceiling, dudes. I just have a marking stick. I obviously use something lighter weight. I just put the marking stick on the uh, on the wall and mark, 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 okay? And then I'll move it to my, uh, my last mark, 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 mark. Simple, right? Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like the five eights board, yeah. Um yeah, five eights is good for sound rating. That's uh double layer five eights is is good stuff, yeah. I think you might use this stuff if you're not going five double layer, or maybe this in conjunction with double layer two. I'm not sure. Can't remember. I think it is I think most of the time but most party walls like in hotels and stuff. I don't know. Do we go double layer in ho I'm just thinking hotels specifically. I can't it's been a while since I've done one, but I I, I know that at the this res bar is everywhere. But I don't know if we do double layer. I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. But yeah, pretty straightforward. Pretty simple. How's Will Cash doing, my man? Good to see you, brother. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, shoot. Um, and then I guess the only, only a couple of other really th popular things that we use is furring bar and angle. That, those are a couple of, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I've never seen it. I've never, ever seen it done, uh, vertical. Okay. I've only, I've only ever seen it horizontal. Okay. So um yeah you if you if you're um and you're using stand up so yeah usually with steel stud we don't we don't do a whole lot of laydowns with steel stud right it's mostly stand ups cuz there there is like um I do know I, it's for proper ratings you need to stand up the sheets on on uh on steel stud but in certain areas like bathrooms for example okay you want to you want to maximize your coverage of course okay so you want you just want one joint in the middle basically all the way around right so uh sometimes we lay down sheets on steel stud but most of the time like 90 percent, 95 percent of the time we're always doing stand-ups on steel stud okay um and, and same thing on wood too like i guess if you're gonna do this on wood it's gotta be horizontal res res channel i've never seen res channel vertical never ever ever seen it that way it would i don't think it would work because it's um it's designed this way okay that's why like um it, it's got a flap that sticks up okay i think that's how the vibration works it, it wouldn't work the same because then you you would have to like you have to frame your wall sideways or something like the studs would have to go this way or you would have to go um or you'd have to have your studs and then a layer of furring bar this way and then a layer of res channel this way or something you know what i mean like that it, uh like you know when you're cl doing cladding okay you can d a double layer uh z bar you know and have different thicknesses of z bar insulate it and then um uh yeah, yeah, but no, yeah, that that'll work. So yeah, it, I wouldn't, uh, uh, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, the board. No, you wouldn't do laydowns on the board on this. It would be all stand ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For res channel, yeah, all stand ups. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> you couldn't, you couldn't uh, lay the sheets down. No, it wouldn't work. Um, so, actually, thinking of it though, Verdon, uh, you know what? I'm trying to think. I think we did. We did do that once. You're right. Double layer. That's how, that's it. Double layer. So if that's, that's right. So, uh, Virgin, Virgin, good point. So what we've done, um, uh, on, I remember now on uh, what we did on the hallways, uh, it's all wood framed, uh, apartment complexes, um, four story, uh, walk ups. And then we got, or six story, whatever, who cares? Long 300 feet long hallways. Okay. Uh, all wood. So a uh, res bar always goes horizontal always so first layer stand up stand up stand up stand up stand up second layer lay down okay lay down 12s but this is the trick okay you're adding a extra uh, res bar in okay so you're gonna have an extra piece of res bar uh, 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 so for the lay down part you want it to, you want make sure you got one to catch your bottom and one to catch your top so you're adding two pieces of res bar in the middle okay that's to make sure your uh, lay downs uh, fit. That way you only have the one joint, okay? One joint down the middle of the hallway type thing. So yeah, that's how, that's how you do it, okay? Or you can only do lay downs with res bar if it's double layer, okay? That's how it's done, yeah, duh. So that hallway trick would work for rooms too or whatever, right, party walls and stuff. But yeah, good good point, good to bring that up. How you doing, uh, veteran man, uh, vet veteran? Veteran, yeah, right on. No, that's cool, brother. Right on. I uh, appreciate that. <clears throat> but, 
But yeah, man, like I was saying, we got, uh, let's go back to accessories here for a second. Cause I just, just to quickly touch on, um, backer bar, wind brace, grommet, Z bar channel. I guess channel is important, right? Like this is the U bar or channel. Okay. We put that as a, a stiffener. Okay, you you put this in in every four feet. It, it'll help it helps keeps the insulation in the wall. It stops it from falling down. So um, even if, even when you're framing wood, you put b blocking in to hold your insulation in, right? But um, with the with this is nice because you it, it 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 like the insulation touches. It's beautiful. There's no spaces or gaps in it, right? Um, yeah, 12 foot lengths, usually always 12 foot lengths. I've never seen it. And then see these clips right here. You can also clip it. Oh, dude, up highway seven, eh? <laughs> up highway seven, eh? Right on. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, Huntsville, nice area. Yeah, right on, man. right on, real cash, right on, brother. Yeah, I got some orange runts and some grape something, but yeah, I'm gonna hit that after. But yeah, so clips, um, you can clip it on exterior walls. Uh, I think you almost always clip exterior walls. Um, it's but this, um, I don't like installing clips this way. Okay, uh, I like installing clips on the inside of the stud because it, it stops it from from like turning uh, like you know more if so i don't use these these i manufacture my own clips just cut angle okay you just cut angle to fit inside and it's nice like i you know you can of course do it this way for sure but um you know it's definitely quicker and easier to do it this way but you just use i just clamp it in and screw it boom 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 um but yeah i i, I tend to put them on the inside as much as i can uh so of course when i'm lazy and i'm Board. like I'm tired or whatever I'm gonna put it on the outside but um, I think maybe it might matter more on the bigger six inch studs right or eight inch studs but clips uh, you're also gonna take these clips you're gonna shoot them into the or just your angle okay and it's clips you'll just shoot them two shots into your column on the end of the wall that way it's not moving at all okay you can't move off the structure okay and then you're clipping and you just stagger your clips okay you put one here, one here, one here, you know, you stagger them, boom, boom, boom. You don't go every single stud, you just stagger them. Yeah, flat, uh, flat strap, so there's flat stock as well, we call flat stock. It comes in, in coils. And uh, you, uh, when you're building like panels, for example, you, you can, you'll, you'll, you'll put X's and they, they put it in certain places. Uh, I'm not so sure like i mean I, I get the purpose of it if you're like uh if you're if you're building panels that go in uh are being installed later because it keep, helps keep the walls square and stuff but you know i don't i'm not so sure like it's a, a strengthening stiffening thing uh if it's engineered and spec you just install it i don't i'm not so sure the purpose behind it uh, uh, other than keeping it square um i don't know how much strength it adds i, I you know i really don't know um but yeah, flat strap as well. So when you can't hang the back side of the wall. Yeah, right on, man. That's cool. Yeah, Huntsville. That's awesome, man. Right on. Um, yeah, actually my uh, my dad does a lot of construction down in Ontario. He I'm from Ontario. Um, yeah, my dad does a lot of stuff in the Kortha Lakes. He does a lot of um, like multi-million dollar cottages around the lakes and stuff. So, yeah, he's pretty cool. I wanted to do a job with him, but I think he's uh, too old. I don't know. He he doesn't want to do a job with me. <laughs> he might he might be retiring, retiring. Who knows? Just curious. Wonder what they what they have for drywall trim solutions. Just uh, just to check here. Oh yeah, I see. You can get um, flex. Um, you can get flex uh, like track that bends as well now which is kind of neat you don't have to use a track bender uh you can get stuff that actually bends now which is cool <clears throat> you don't always know uh you, you don't have to uh screw in the the stud like if the you don't have to screw the stud into the track if you're crimping it no um uh, but 
I, I see, I don't use crimpers. I always use screws. I, I find it the screws to be 10 times faster than crimping. Honestly, I do. Um, cause, uh, crimping, if you, if you know how, when you're crimping, uh, sorry, you, uh, you, you, there's like, you've got to do half crimp. Okay. It's like a boom, boom. You, if you go all the way in, we call that a bitch crimp and it's like, uh, it's no good. That won't, that won't hold. You want to just go boom. Just that one little boom. So you gotta, you know, you don't wanna crank, 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 okay? Cause that's just, bit, we call those bitch crimps. They don't hold, okay? If when you go all the way, you just wanna go half way. So, um, but yeah, you could put a screw in after or whatever. It's all good. Um, I, I don't recommend um, doing that too much. Uh, like at least in the bottoms, right? You should uh, put screws in uh, and crimp the tops, you know? Or put screws in one side and crimp, crimp the back sides type thing you know i like that i i see a lot um but uh, you don't have to no you definitely don't have to but just be aware okay like if you don't if you're not screwing your studs in those crimps aren't the best like like especially with light gauge like or those the only time you can crimp is with light gauge it just just too flimsy you know what i mean like light gauge is already flimsy enough um without having extra problems when you're drywalling okay if you're just the framer and you can get away with that sure but if you're going to be doing the drywalling and taping after okay you you want that uh, your steel you want it to be strong you know yeah metal dome yeah these are cool eh uh you can yeah you can get all kinds of stuff um and yeah i want to build like man i'm I'm, th I'm gonna when i do my house here i'm gonna do a nice i'm gonna do something uh around in the middle of my living room for sure i'm working on that uh we use that crc when the wall is over 12 foot uh also like i said the flat strap goes on furred walls oh i i got you yeah 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 word i i hear you i hear you I, I don't understand that. I don't understand it either. That doesn't make too much sense because furring walls, like I said, like who cares what's on the back side of it? A furring wall is usually in front of a concrete wall or like a, a already a, a double layer, five eighths, both sides, demising wall. It's just you're furring it out to put plumbing and electrical in. Um, I don't know exactly how you're going to get the, the strapping on the back um, unless you're building the wall on the floor and then standing it up, which I, that's a weird um, so I don't, I don't know why you're doing that, but, uh, I, I, yeah, I, but you're right. I've, I've seen, I've seen it on exterior wall paneling and it's basically just to keep it square and help through the delivery process and installation process to keep it square. Um, but yeah, if you're building in place, I, I don't understand using metal strapping corner to corner like that. It, it doesn't make too much sense. Um, but sometimes like in hotels and things like that, it is specified. So you just install it. Right. But yeah so i i so i so i did my sheet metal like i'm a i am like i am a sheet metal apprentice uh i've used brakes but no we steel stud guys don't use uh brakes no uh, uh brake forms are, are for sheet metal workers um doing ducks or like flashings for she, like you know cladding and stuff like that metal roofing stuff like that okay that's that's who uses brakes um but yeah no just uh, steel stud guys never use brakes they probably don't wouldn't even know what one which one what one was you know what i mean but no brake forms are for flashings um and like yeah i mean most of that stuff you like uh, big stuff is going to be manufactured at the shop uh but you just have a small brake like a four foot brake on site for just small flashings and stuff right but yeah yeah there you go yeah will cash yeah exactly yeah it's a hotel i know I, that's the only time i've seen it is in a hotel myself but we didn't have to install it on the back side we installed it on the inside right and then uh that was only on like corner like corners like i think it was like on the corners uh you know uh, it wasn't it wasn't on in between units it was just on the outsides uh, i think i'm pretty sure um, but yeah, we didn't have to put it on the back side of the wall, just on the inside, unless you, unless you're exposed, unless it's exposed and you're on a lift and you can do it right. Then yeah, for sure. That, that, that I get. Yeah, for sure. Right. Cause if you're on a lift and you can, and it's not, and it's all exposed, then you can strap it out with a flat stock. Yes. Right. That's probably what's going on there. Uh, <sighs> Oh, 
when it's over 12 feet. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> But yeah, dudes, that's the thing. Like my like my crimper, I like I don't even know where my crimper is. I never use it. I never ever ever use it. Um, I'm just so efficient with the screws. Like, you know, uh, I just keep a handful of framing screws in my thing, and I just go zip 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 zip. It's just so easy. I don't understand the crimping thing. Like, it's just they're so like they're long handled. They're bigger, bulky, you know. And plus, that's that's a kind of that motion with my hand specifically. That's I. I have issues with my hands. I wouldn't, I can't do it that well. Like I can do it once in a while, but I could, I couldn't crimp out a whole job. That would just destroy my hand. There's no way um, I'd be able to do that, but uh, it might work for some people. I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, but my, my recommendation for absolute, for the best quality uh, is to use screws always. Yeah. And, but if you are, and if you are crimping, just be careful not to bitch, uh, bitch crimp it all the way it's just like a half crimp half crimp half crimp that's the strongest crimp <sighs> but yeah no lots of guys do that lots of guys crimp everything so yeah all right well moving on from the steel uh i don't know if there's anything else we wanted to go over but yeah it's pretty straightforward like furring bar it's pretty it's seven eighths wide it's pretty pretty straightforward um i might as well i might as well look it up just to show you guys, uh, like what it looks like, okay? Uh, it looks like that, okay? And you can get this in all different kinds of gauges as well. Uh, this is what we use for bracing uh, ceilings or doing ceilings or furring out, like, you know, strapping out walls and all kinds of different things the furring bar is used for. Um, but yeah, no, that's what furring bar is. The distance is usually almost always 7 eighths, okay? Excuse me, and you can get this 25 gauge, 20 gauge, 18 gauge, whatever gauge. Like it's it's pretty um pretty straightforward. And then the last the last thing, let me see if we can go angle angle. Yeah, there we go. And and then normal angles. Oh, that's not it. But anyways, one side will be an inch and a quarter. The other side will be an inch and a half. Okay, that's pretty standard. Okay, inch and a quarter by inch and a half. The uh, angle, this isn't it, guys, so don't get confused. Uh, but yeah, it's angle. It's 90. It's inch and a half by inch and a quarter. That's standard stuff. You can get inch and a half by inch and a half. You can get two inch. You can get four. You can get like some crazy sizes, but the standard size, inch and a half by inch and a quarter. Oh, yeah, excellent. So, um, right on. No, I get you. So, frost walls and basements are probably the most common area to use crimpers, believe it or not. So, I get that. That's that's definitely where you've seen that or learned it from. Um, yeah, fro like frost walls and the basements, that's the, that's the most common area to use crimpers, guys. But I got you. All right, all right word up, man. I, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Are you doing, are you doing the the parapets too? Are you or no? That's somebody else. So you could also, guys, uh, just Google like a STC calculator or fire rating um, um, calculator. It's simple, right? This is for wood studs, though. Like this one's for wood, uh, but let's just for fun. Okay, let's go. Uh, Four hundred is sixteen inch insulation uh let's go with just regular bat so glass fiber would be bat uh so rock or slag that would be your um like uh semi-rigid this is this is this is a very stupid wording that this this site is using it should be bat uh or uh and then um uh semi-rigid and rigid okay or cellulose that's the spray and stuff okay but let's just use bat Resilient metal channels. We'll say no, no, no res channel, no res bar. Uh, protective layers. Let's go type. Oh, type X for fire rating, of course. Uh, we're gonna go five eighths. Single layer. Okay. Oh, hold on here. Oh, 
fifty. So, I guess it's uh, I guess it's uh, asking you what you want to achieve. So forty five minutes. So basically, five eighths is like forty minutes a, a layer. Okay. Load bearing type. Oh, uh, non load bearing. We'll say. That's weird. All right, that's a crappy calculator. Moving on. DuPont, I like this one here, this is neat. Okay, so this here, uh, look at look at the different walls types, the like finishes, okay? DuPont is uh, like the guys who do like the membranes and stuff like that, and uh, like the primers for that. Oh, look at that. Wall assembly inputs. Look at that. Energy code and year. Oh, look at that. So tell, uh, the code and everything. Climate zone, cladding, stucco. All right, we'll go usually 2-inch R10. Uh, exterior sheeting, gypsum 5-8, sure. Uh, no, we'll go 6-inch, six 16-inch. That would be R20. Uh, interior finish will be, well, we're going to drop to half inch. Uh, I'm confused now. I don't know. Where does it put the results or say calculate? Huh. Anyways, that's weird. That doesn't work. What's this one here? CGC wall assemblies. Here we go. Yeah, like this is this is weird. Like these don't make sense. I'm just I just uh, opened up a bunch, of, but um, yeah, it's weird. Let's let, let's see if this one will work here. Okay. Uh, so there's a half hour reading. Uh, one layer five eighths. Uh, sheetrock gypsum panel one layer two inch by four inch uh, oh that's the wood studs two by four wood at 16 inch uh, insulation you got fiberglass that's just weird wording but 5.5 hours one hour uh, one hour you got one layer half five eighths and one layer res channel three and five eighths steel stud fiberglass insulation and five eighths so yeah so you got five eighths on either side for one hour uh let's load more because most of the time they want two hours or like uh two hours between like uh um like demising walls are going to be two hours. That's that's why you go double layer five eighths, right? Look at this, like one hour, one hour. I've even seen three hour ratings for like heavy duty mechanical rooms and stuff. Holy cow, that's a lot of different assemblies, eh? Oh, not even at the two hour. Let's go up here. Let's see here. Let's let's just see. Let's find the let's find the different. Okay, wall assemblies. Let's go uh, interior polyurtition. Sure. Uh, we want fire resistant drywall panels. So type uh, five eighths type X for sure. Framing type uh, steel stud non load bearing. Uh, rating. Let's go two hours. There we go. So that's cool, actually. Uh, that shows you a bunch of different systems here, and it gives you a detail. But uh, yeah, you go. You got two layers of uh, five eighths. Uh, 
What no oh, that that's that's calling for three three layers. That's re, that's not gonna happen. That's not right. You wouldn't do three three layers of five eights. That's that's not right. Oh, for STC fifty five maybe. Well, that's weird. It's STC fifty eight. Res channel. Uh, here we go. There we go. STC fifty four. Uh, so sound rating 50, uh, 54, two hour fire rating is two layer five eights and three and five eights studs. It doesn't matter what the stud is. Okay. You can, you go six inch and, um, it, the insulation will give you a little bit more of an STC rating. Um, uh, but yeah, to get your, get your two hours, uh, two hour rating, you need double layer five eights, both sides. Okay. Now to get your, uh, STC rating up, you can thicken the wall. Uh, use a heavier insulation. You can add res channel. Uh, you can also add the green glue and stuff. I, I know my, my, I have STC rating of 72 in my garage. Okay. My garage is 72. So that's, that's super high, right? But it's a, it's a sound studio, right? So of course I'm just, the last thing I got to do is I'm going to replace my overhead door at the front with insulated metal panels. This hopefully I can do that this summer. But just to show you guys, so CGC, right? You, this stuff is cool. Like you can come and explore this stuff if if you're worried about not knowing or understanding. The information's there, um, but don't. But you got to be careful. Like to to look. To, don't go and say to get two hour rating. You need. You're gonna go install three three layers of drywall. That's just not right. Uh, so let's go to two. Let's go to three hours. Let's take off the two hour and go to three hour. And see what they what they come up with. So three hour. Uh, let's go to drop down to fifty four. The same sound rating or lower, even fifty two here. So yeah, look at that. Three layers of five eighths on both sides. Okay, that's uh, heavy duty. That's the most I've ever seen. Okay, is three three layers on both sides. That's the most I've ever seen in my entire career. And that was like super heavy duty mechanical areas. Okay. So most of the time when you're, uh, when it's a mechanical room inside of a, inside of a unit that's already separated from other units, it's just like some kind of like, like a electrical room or whatever, one layer of five eights. Okay. You just need that 45 minute rating. Okay. Um, even if that, it's just an extra precaution basically at that time. But if you're, if it's a mechanical room for the building, okay, then you need to have two hour separation. Okay. It's double layer, both sides, five eights. Okay. No, I don't think that's overkill at all. Um, but I, I would have got rid of the res bar and and, and used uh, green glue, sound glue, and that would have get shot his sound rating way up, way up. Cause yeah, the res bar uh, isn't isn't like isn't my favorite product, man. It really, it doesn't. It, and, and, and you know, it's, and it gives you. I don't know. It's it's not my favorite favorite product because. Like I liked the fact that I went like even on my ceiling here. So I got the 10 inch or whatever is it, 10 or 8 inch? I can't remember. Uh, floor joists for the for the upstairs, and I, and so I got it's all it's packed with insulation. And then I was able to screw the I got my sheets my five eight double layer five eights on my ceiling here. I screwed it right to the wood. It's beautiful, super strong, and I green glued in between the layers on the ceiling. Okay, uh, the thing is with the res bar. Is you can't screw it into the wood. You got to screw it into the res bar. You know what I mean? So you got to map out and make sure you're missing the wood, in fact, or you're gonna screw up the whole sound rating. Okay. So, but yeah, it, it's not overkill. I if you if you really want sound to be soundproof, that's the way you do it. Absolutely. But like I said, I would I would have eliminated the res bar, and and bought the green glue. And mind you, the green glue is a lot more expensive. I think it's like a hundred dollars a tube. Um, it cost me $3,000 just for glue, I think in this place, like it was, it, it was crazy expensive. Yeah, I'll show you. It's, it's wonderful stuff. Uh, it, it really is super, super good stuff. Sounds like it's, um, raining again. Yeah, there we go. Hold on, I don't want to go there. There it is. There's the green glue company right here. 
Yeah, just just what it is right there. So uh, it's basically almost one tube per sheet. <laughs> okay, like it's it's almost a full tube per sheet. Uh, when like you know when I'm using, I think like on the I don't know these were ten foot sheets and the ceiling I was using twelves, but. Wow, yeah, I, I could see that in a music recording studio, four layers. Oh, yeah, I could totally see that, 100%. And the kidnapping rooms, yeah. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's green glue, noise-proofing compound. That's what I would have done, for sure. It's way better than Resbar, than Resilient, like RC+. Plus. The green glue noise proofing comp. I'm gonna. I don't know if there's any freaking music on that. I can't hear it anyway. So. and cost effective solution. Is there music on that, guys? Problems. The following video will provide right. instruction on how. Let me just. Let me just turn it up a little bit. from your case of green glue noise proofing compound. When ready to begin, tap your tube of compound on a hard surface to bring compound away from the tip yeah, and prevent dripping. Exactly. Yeah. Cut a one quarter inch hole in the tip of the tube with a utility knife. Screw nozzle tightly over the tip of the tube and cut a one quarter inch hole in the tip of the nozzle. When your nozzle is properly cut, place the tube in a standard 28 ounce caulk gun to prepare for installation. The caulk gun. Pull the trigger to dispense the product from the tube onto the drywall, leaving a two to three inch border around the panel to allow for handling. This is exactly The application how I did it. pattern does not matter so long as you have distributed product evenly across the drywall. Yep. For best performance, it is recommended that you apply two tubes of compound onto each four by eight foot panel. Once the first tube is emptied, discard the cartridge, replace with a Two new tubes. prepared second tube. Two tubes? I don't know. It, yeah, I, I took me 120 tubes. Oh, yeah, that's right. So no it, I, just, I was just over 60 sheets. So uh, it was, uh, it was 100, it took, panel, it so it's 120 to tubes. The first layer so two tubes a sheet. Hey, what's up, Chris Compton, man? Good to see you, brother. Like, that's a lot of glue, man. It's expensive shit, but... It is recommended that so a one-quarter inch gap be left along the top and bottom of the panel to allow for sealing. Yeah, that's a crazy amount. Yeah, so two Within tubes. Within 15 that's minutes right. of it's applying green glue to your drywall, but yeah, fasten with tubes. screws that comply I with I did it exactly like cuts. they show you here. Yeah, I did it exactly. Even like the how, spreading, to follow how he spread it on the sheet. Applied green glue to I did it exactly like that. Panels. What is it with these guys using green drills? Green compound, like those drills, man. Use a drywall gun when you're doing drywall. For information drywall, on other Come green on. glue products and for additional information on the green glue noise proofing compound performance and installation, please visit definitely. www.greenglue.com. Definitely, uh, definitely. What's good, Chris Compton? What do you What do you got cooking, man? Yeah, check this out too. They got different uh, joint tape and. Like, uh, even on my boxes, so all of my, uh, like, um, all of my boxes for lights and, um, and, uh, like my switches and receptacle boxes and light boxes all have putty. So I, uh, I, I wrapped it all with a soundproofing putty as well, right? Like, uh, it's, I, I went all out on my studio, so, <laughs> I didn't use uh, that product for, from this company. But look, see, look at that. So he's lining the joists, so for soundproofing flooring and all that. Ah, you do that too? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like, even like those, um, the things, like the bits you can get, I, I forget what they call them, but uh, you can get, um... oh, no. Yeah, it's raining here right now. This is good. I'm almost done my front gardens. Holy cow, man. I need, I just, it's been cold this week. So I, I, I just took a break, but I'm almost done my front gardens. I, oh man, I, the, the, it's so much work, our gardens. Oh my God. I just wanted to see, come on, punk. Clips.
So, I don't, these kind of clips, I think uh, what they do is they go on to furring bar. Yeah, uh, this is, these are super high end, okay, when you're using these clips. Like, I've used these in, um, like, and this guy's using a drill. He's not even using an impact. Give me a break. Um, but I, um, I, on, on Mechanically separating two sides of a wall condos. can improve sound transmission by allowing one side to vibrate independently from the other. Green glue noise proofing clips are excellent for decoupling and have been proven to increase sound isolation across all frequencies. This video will provide instruction on installation and spacing of the clip. Clip spacing is 48 inches horizontal yeah, to yeah, using a pair of metal cutting shears. Once cut, fasten the hat channel into the clip by inserting the bottom lip first yeah, and pulling down it. to like snap the, the channel into place. Goes into the clip. Yeah, that's Sections right. where hat channel is overlapped should be secured with two one yeah, and one quarter inch fine thread system. drywall screws. Uh, but don't, I, Once all I don't, pieces of hat channel are snapped into place... I've never used it with light gauge furring bar though. Only, only 20 gauge furring bar. So heavy gauge furring bar in those sound clips. And we've done it on the... Um, no, no, it's not the same. I asked that question, uh, Zaphile, if I could just use some sort of adhesive, and no, it, it's not. That This glue never dries, okay? That's why it's soundproof, okay? It it never dries, okay? It always stays, like, mo like wet, I guess. It doesn't dry. Um, so it's that, it just gives you that vibration or something, you know? I don't know. It's just crazy. But yeah, my weekend was great. Um, my wife, uh, was out, went out last night, um, she, uh, with her work and they had like a, it was like a, she's in marketing and advertising. So it was like advertising awards night. So, and her friend, uh, won an award and her agency won an award. So that's good. It was, it was good. And so I was with the kids. We, we had reverse dinner. I baked, uh, like I did homemade cupcakes with them, you know, and, uh, and then we made dinner. So yeah, we had reverse dinner. <laughs> And then, yeah, we just watched movies and uh, popcorn. And then, uh, yeah, and then this morning, wife was out again at a course. So I was just, I'm, I'm tired. I didn't really sleep much. It was just so, just too much. I was trying to take a nap today, but no, the kids weren't let, weren't, weren't, weren't letting me have any of that. <laughs> but yeah, so those are, those clips are another product. Pretty, pretty neat. What do we got here? Anyways, so yeah, you guys kind of got a bit of an idea of like fire rating and sound rating and stuff like that. Um, as far as like tools go, like, oh my gosh, dude. So let me show you. Let me just kind of get move this out of the way here for a second. And I'm going to switch over to my, let's get, oh, nope. All right, let's get that out of the way for a second here. Um, I guess I'll put this over here. Uh, this is the new uh, Hilti Neuron line, right? I love it. So the, the these new batteries, they go in backwards. Okay, they're they're going in the front, front now, and they're a little bit uh, further out at the front and like flush at the back which was a little bit to get used to but they like they're pretty neat so they're kind of springy i like they have the power indicator but uh they kind of pop like on a spring out which is nice the old ones uh weren't like that they weren't as nice but i i, rem I love this new hilti line this is an impact gun all right um this this is for framing okay framing and like screwing in things, okay? Um, drills are for drilling holes, okay? They're not for screwing things in, right? Impact guns are for uh, uh, screwing things in. And I love the light. This That's new on the impact gun, that ring light there. Very, very cool. And for drywall, okay? And these batteries, oh my God, they charge super quick. Um, like just really a great system, actually. Really great system. I like that the... This one here, okay, when you're, when you're, listen, see how quickly it stops, okay? The old one,
just use this this old battery here. But yeah, you can see the 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 difference, right? This is the old version. This is oh, battery's dead. Hold on. I bet you it's on my damn saw. Hold on here. <clears throat> there we go. <coughs> All right, hold on here. Okay. Okay. Right, so the reason why the, the reason why the old one it takes so long to wind down is not as good as the new version is because if you want to reverse something out, okay, you, you got to wait for. And this one is a newer 4500. The older ones took even longer to wind down, but this one here, you can immediately put it in re reverse and reverse out a um, a screw or something, okay. But yeah, these these new 5000s are great. The, I've I burnt out a couple of these uh, between the old version and, and then the, and then this final like this neuron line they weren't so good like they were having problems with their depth gauge okay this is your depth gauge here so when I like you want to be able to this is why I don't like the the strip attachment because you got to be constantly adjusting your your depth so when you're when you're screwing in like your your, your corners your inside corners or whatever you want to you want to Tighten it in a couple bit. You want it because it, you know. And then if you guys know this, this is your distance. So you put this uh, against your uh, wall, and you go straight in. That's that's your distance for corners. Okay, for screwing in. Boom, boom. Um, it, that's there's a reason why these are the same size. Okay, this, you you butt this up to the wall, and and then you screw that corner in. And then yeah, you want to come out for your uh, field screws and in on the bevels and and in on the corners. Okay, uh, yeah, I just put screws in my hand one at a time, boom, 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 boom. And then also, you know, if you're switching between um, uh, inch and a quarter and two inch for double layer, okay, it's just like, yeah, the strips to me are just too much of a pain in the ass, okay? I don't, I'm not a fan of them. Lots of guys do them. It's, your, it's just a preference thing, I suppose, okay? But yeah, so that's your drywall gun and the pieces are, you got your magnetic sh uh, shaft, okay? Now, this is a Hilti standard size. It's short. It's short. So if you go and buy just any any uh, uh, shaft, it won't work in the Hilties, okay? The, the Hilti has its own specific size. It's a short shaft, okay? Uh, but yeah, make, that's a magnetic bit holder. You always want to use a magnetic bit holder with steel stud, okay? Always, always, always magnetic bit holder. But yeah, that's the old version, the old, the SID 22 or whatever, the impact gun. Hey, that one had lights, I think too. I think it had lights on this version. I'm not sure. <clears throat> hey, I appreciate that, man. And then you're you're always using a Phillips number two, okay? Phillips number two. Uh, that's basically your standard bit for a steel stud and drywall. Now you can see this is a Milwaukee uh, Milwaukee magnetic bit holder. Okay, uh, it's longer than than the than the Hilti drywall, the one that goes in the drywall gun. So this one won't go in to the drywall gun. Okay, but yeah, quick release on that. But no, excellent drills, excellent, excellent drills, guys. Like Hilti, they just don't die. Like I've killed, I've never killed an impact gun, Hilti impact gun, but I've killed um, drywall guns. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, this is your half inch drill. Okay, so this is for making holes, guys. Okay, like you have the right tool for the right for the job. Okay, this has got a hammer drill function. Okay, 15, uh, 15 speed and uh, hammer drill function just in case you know, might as well just get the hammer drill one that does do hammer. You got two, two speeds here. Okay, 
Uh, but yeah, that's your half inch drill. Okay, it's beautiful. So I use this um, for, um, well, yeah, making holes. So like when you're doing 15 gauge and 16 gauge, sometimes you want to pilot holes for pin bolts and stuff like that. Because a hammer drill bit, like your actual hammer drill, which I don't have out here, damn it. But this this isn't what you use to drill in pin bolts, okay? You use a hammer drill. I'll, I'll show you what that is uh, right up on Hilti here, actually. Go to power tools. Uh, rotary hammers, sure. I think it's in here. Yeah. So yeah, these are the types of hammer drills that you would use for putting in uh, pin bolts for like door frames or pin bolting down uh, bottom track. Okay. Um, there's two different models. I like this one. Okay. I like this this version, the one with the long the long barrel type thing. I like this one. It gets into more places than the square model. Okay, so if you look at the uh, this other version, it's like this. Okay, it doesn't get into as many places as the as the square one. So that's why I like the square one. You know, yeah, holes holes in concrete and concrete deck. Exactly. Yeah, you, or if you're like sometimes if you don't have a, a a special shooter to to hang to do hanger wire in the ceilings. Okay, you would pre-drill. Put your and then drill in your eye eye hooks or eye, eye bolts or whatever in there. This is your router or drywall cut cutout cutout tool. Okay, so um, there's different pieces on that. Let me see if I can get a. Uh, hold on. Ah, here we go. I'm not gonna cut. I'm not gonna take it apart. But you can you you hold the lock and then unscrew this. And your 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 bolt here or your whatever stopper here can come right off. You can change the coupler to change the width of the bit that goes in. There's this is a this is a guide point. It's got like a soft tip on the on the outside to go around trace boxes and stuff. Okay, um, that's for tracing. And then there's the standard point that does not have a soft tip. Okay, the standard point is for doing like cuts like. When you're cutting out circles or like pipes or whatever, you can use your circle cutter to, to, to guide it. And then you'll do this or you're cutting tops, like stuff around, you know, that's for cutting uh, out, cutting out the sheets. And the guide point is for tracing stuff, okay? Um, there's, a, there's a quarter inch bit right there with the quarter inch coupler. And then there's one in between. I, I can't remember what it is, like five sixteenths, one eighth, five sixteenths or something like that, right? Different couplers. Uh, for different size of bits, okay? The biggest being your quarter inch bit or three eighths or whatever it is. I think it's, I don't know, I think it's a quarter inch or three inch, I can't remember. It's the big one. So yeah, you can have, three, there's three different sizes of bit for that and two different types So of bits. So guide point, standard point, and then yeah, you got your three sizes, okay? One eighth, five sixteenths, and uh, I don't know if it's three eighths or a quarter inch, but yeah, drywall cutout tool or router. We call them routers. <laughs> drywall router, okay? It's not a router. We a lot of guys call these routers. Uh, and then yeah, this is for uh, cold cut. Ex uh, you, this is just doing for rough cuts on site. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for doing a whole job with. It's three eighths. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that, brother. Um, uh, yeah, you. This is a wood blade because I was just I just built the platform like a, a seven foot deck to do a stairwell. But you can put uh, metal blades. This is the metal saw. Okay, it's got different RPM uh, for cutting a lower RPM for cutting metal. Okay, uh, but you can cut wood with it. But this is the the cold cut metal saw. The X X cut blades are like a hundred dollars a piece. So quite expensive. <clears throat> Yeah, that's pretty standard stuff. But yeah, that's mean like have the right drill for the right job for the job, okay? <laughs> like my goodness. Clamps are pretty straightforward, guys. So I I love these. They're my favorite clamps in the world. You can you can get these on my Amazon store, like on my recommended products page. Uh, these are the 9DR clamps. Um, these are the most, I love these because of the wide grip on them. So you can clamp anything like, you know, almost anything. I don't use the big, big clamps at all anymore. I use these for everything. Okay. So I got lots of these ones. Um, these are the best clamp there is. 
I wanted to show you there's these ones with swivels. I very rarely use these ones, okay? Like hardly ever use the ones with swivel ends. Um, because it just doesn't leave you a lot of room to put the screw in, okay? I'll show you the ones that I do use. Cool, some more goodies here. So, uh, you gotta be kidding me. See, I, I got another swivel one. I don't use these, that's, that's why they're together. I don't use these swivel ones. Basically, they, they just have the, the normal baby clamps that have ends just like these ones do. Okay, they're just smaller, okay? I don't don't use these, but you know, you can get them that have ones that have these little releases, uh, release tabs or whatever. You you know, you, you tighten them here, but these are baby clamps. Use those to uh, to clamp your studs in or just small stuff or whatever, okay? Uh, but yeah, these are your the only two clamps you really need are are these big clamps and baby clamps. But do not get swivel head one, swivel head ones. Okay, these are for different stuff. Okay, they're they're not for framing. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna look through them. Probably, uh, they're probably inside. I, I should have brought out more tools with me, but we can put these away. Uh, chalk line, simple, basically a uh, black, like a high vi like a high visibility one, num like number four or five. Uh, for layout, uh, you want to be like three or lower blue for snapping on drywall. Uh, your framing square, very standard. Uh, so this, uh, your butterfly clips here, okay, are important for your, you know, you just take, you, you clip your tape onto the stud, okay, use it to draw out your 16s, okay. Uh, you know, you just clamp the 16 inch on your on your first 16, okay, and just yeah, you can pull from there to do your layouts. Um, if you're like, if you need to stretch a long way, I guess you could clamp it. Sometimes I'll clamp it to the end and then and then run and take a long measurement type thing. But uh, it's like an extra pair of hands, okay. I love it. The Stanley Fat Max 25 foot is the only tape you need. Okay, clamps are the best. Yeah, you know it. Don't buy any other tape, guys. Do not buy, and the reason being is don't, and never buy one that has metric and um, uh, imperial, okay? You want it, you need to be able to see both sides of the tape, okay? If you need a metric tape, buy a metric tape, okay? Don't use the, don't use ones that have both. It's too, it's too much, okay? Hey, what's up, Lemon, my man? Good to see you, brother. And then, yeah, this is the only blade that you need is a one inch Ulfa, okay? Don't go with the small one, okay? That is that is no good. The one inch Ulfa can cut insulation, and it can cut, it can even cut uh, semi-rigid, like rock sole, it can cut rigid, um, it can cut bat, <laughs> it can cut any type of drywall. It's sturdy, it's very sturdy. So when you use the little one, your lines can be like this, right? It, this is strong and sturdy. Plus, okay, look, you got tons of room. When you're tape cutting, right, you, you're, you got tons of room to cut, right? And you want, to, you want that death grip on there, right? So you're just boom, 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 okay? That little one is just too puny, okay? I don't know, that's for arts and crafts. Okay, the smaller knives are for girls. They're for arts and crafts. You need to use the one inch Ulfa. That's the that's the straight blade that I use. Uh, the there's the old school ones, okay, where they're the double edged um, the double edged ones, which which I used for many many years. But the the, the, the you can't cut insulation with that shit and all that, right? This is a one blade does all, right? That's what you want, okay? <clears throat> that's a rasp. That's a rasp, boom, boom, boom. That's for when you do cuts, okay? You just you just make them nice and smooth, okay? It's important when you're doing certain things, okay, to have smooth edges. Uh, a lot of tapers have these so that they can uh, fix corners and do stuff, okay? Well, you shouldn't, the taper shouldn't have to do that. The drywaller should make it nice so that taper doesn't have any problems. Um, this right here, sorry, this is kind of muddy right now, but this is a scuba diving knife. 
Okay, something with a serrated edge is really good for uh, semi-rigid, like rock sole and stuff like that. Okay, I got well, I got different knives for cutting a semi-rigid, like rock sole, but uh, yeah, this is something that the the sheet metal workers union, they they this is what they used when I was working there, and I got that through them. So I have a couple of these blades. They're scuba diving knives, pretty good. Um, nice, uh, nice tool actually. I don't I don't really use it much anymore, but it is what it is. Uh, circle cutter, right? This is for cutting circles, like for pipes and stuff like that. You find center and uh, straightforward, okay? You got your your pipe sizes along the, like your hole sizes here, okay? Always go a little bit bigger than the pipe. You know what I mean? Don't go super tight. Just go a little bit bigger. And uh, that you this scores the paper. <clears throat> and then that's where you the standard, uh, standard bit on the cutout tool comes in. Just zoop, cut, right? Done. Uh, your keyhole saw, okay? So for example, uh, straight up uh, water lines, for example, they'll, 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 they will go through this. This is like one inch or so, or a little bit smaller than an inch. Let's actually measure it here. Three quarters, yeah, three quarters, that's right. They're, they're three quarters of an inch here. So you can just stab it and, 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 and turn it around and there's your, there's your hole for the water lines in smaller openings, okay? Oh, I don't even, you don't even have to tell me. I love Tajima. I love everything Tajima. Yeah, I love their chalk lines. I haven't been able to get one of their chalk lines though forever. I've been trying to get one. Um, I'm, I got this Milwaukee one, but I want a Tajima. I love the Tajima stuff. Yeah, good. it's good stuff, brother. I know. I really do like it. This is the big lug drill hook, right? So you need a hook, man, for your drills, okay? It's like... That's the one of the first things I do when I buy a drywall gun is I remove I remove the side hook and I just and I use this uh, this the big lug it's also on my Amazon page and then drywall lifter these come in different shapes uh, different styles uh, this is the one I pretty much use all the time I got I got tons of these guys like I got probably ten of these um, but yeah these are drywall lifters okay so when you're doing laydowns. Or, um, or if you're doing like stand-ups and you gotta you gotta do it on a T-bar or lift it up to the ceiling, whatever. This a lifter, drywall lifter, okay. A uh, two-foot square is essential for layout, okay. Two-foot square, not it's not essential for normal like just like workers or whatever, but it, it's essential for layout. It's super handy for drywall, okay. It's a must for drywallers if you ask me. Yeah, that that's it right here. That, this is for my. This is this goes on my belt right here. No, I never use. I never use it on. I never use the metal attachment on the drill. If you notice, I take it off. Um, I take it off immediately. It just gets in the way. I never use it. I use the big lug. Okay, I get this on Amazon. You can actually. This is also on my um, on my store page on Amazon for recommended products or whatever. But yeah, I used to, I even did a video on this. Actually, Chris Compton, didn't you? I think that did you comment on that video on my Amazon video? I, I hadn't had a comment on that video in so long. I think it was you that commented on it. But yeah, it was on the that. This is the product that I use. Yeah, it's called the Big Lug. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, uh, that's a, that's like yeah, it, on that video too. The tool tool lanyards. Okay, so this is also squids. So if you need to get lanyards, tool lanyards, or hard hat lanyards, uh, the squids, okay? This is for when you're working at heights or, you know, high rises or wherever, uh, or even like above people on a job, tie off your tools. The, the squids uh, have all kinds of attachments for that, but. Oh, here, I can show you. All right. So. <clears throat> All right. So actually, hold. Let me clear this. Let me clear this. Let me clear the table. Talk about all that stuff. Those, those are uh, clips for work for framing walls underneath T-bar. All right. Oh, eh. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. So two types, just so I can clear the table here, two types of lasers. You got pin lasers and line lasers, okay? They come they come in different shapes and sizes as well. 
uh, pin laser, straight up and down. Okay, line laser shoots a horizontal horizontal line, vertical line, uh, both. Some uh, like the Dovo one I have has a has, has a uh, a vertical line on the front as well, so it shoots 90, which is beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to use that Dovo laser a lot more now. Excuse me. And then last but not least, uh, before I get to that answer for you, these go on T-bar. Okay, this is how you uh, frame walls underneath T-bar. These clips go on the on your on your um, mains or your cross T's or whatever, and you screw the wall, the top track, into these clips. That way, you're never putting a a, a screw into the grid. Okay, you use these clips for underneath T-bar. Okay, that's how you do that. Uh, I'm just wondering, yeah, Revo, the Revo clip. So R-E-V-O-E, -E, Revo clips, okay? Those are what you need for framing walls under T-bar. That way you're not putting screws in the grid. Okay, so here's my pouch, my pouch setup. I, I, I have two pouches, okay? My, it's like an electrician side pouch. I let the leather Cadillac, this is where I put my tools. Um, you know, I always have a variety of markers and pencils. My, uh, Olfa knife goes here. Keyhole goes here. Uh, I got a rasp in there. I never really use this pocket. Okay. I wish it was a little bit bigger, uh, but it's just doesn't really fit anything. So I don't really use this one a bunch and I never use this clip either. <laughs> um, but yeah, I use, I like the, the Cooney's padded belt and the Cooney's padded, um, overalls like the suspenders. Sorry. And, and then my uh, screw pouch on this side. I love this um, uh, five pocket, okay? Uh, that way I put my tape measure in the top here and then I can have multiple different types of screws. I always put my chalk line down here. Uh, it's gorgeous, okay? This is, this is a nice five pocket is what you want. Uh, you don't want anything less or definitely not more, but yeah, the five pocket is perfect, okay? So now moving on. Uh, let me, I can just actually set it up. Let's put it on over here. Uh, all, right. all right, hold on here. So the big, the big lug, okay, it just goes right on your belt, booyah, like that, okay, boom, just like that, <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, okay, and then same thing for the drywall gun, boom, just like that, right there, okay, that's how that works. Right on. See, and you're bending down. It's it's it it falls like kind of in between your legs type thing. Oh, I, I and I super appreciate that guy. I really appreciate that, Chris. Yeah, that was awesome, man. I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's a slow grow on YouTube, man. I wish it. I wish we had more like, you know, more funding to do better things, even. But yeah, that's how that works, man. Pretty straightforward. Um, you. I like this one. I've been using this one for a long time. And then, yeah, you can play with it. Put it where, you know, over here more if you want. Like, it doesn't have to be right there. It could be over here. Like, you just, you could, whatever feels comfortable for you. But yeah, it's super, super easy. And of course, you can bend it in. If it's a little loose or too tight, okay, you can bend it in a little bit, right? These last a long time. Like, uh, the only time I've ever had to replace my, uh, my hook is when I lost the screw, like it came apart. Um, and I lost the, 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 the bolt and the nut, so, yeah, and then I bought a new one, so, oh, but yeah, that's how that goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
But uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. I don't. I mean, if you understand everything I just showed you today, and and are aware of all those tools, man, you've got a pretty good. Uh, you got a pretty good basic understanding of what's up. Okay. Um, like uh, the the thing is, like with the Stanley tapes, man, those are the best. Okay. Like I got metric tapes and imperial tapes. Okay. Because I, I don't mix it up. You want, you want to be able to, to read both sides of that tape for speed. Okay, it's for speed purposes. <laughs> Whew. Okay, if you, you shouldn't really need to convert metric and imperial too much. Okay, especially if we're just an installer, you should never need metric. Okay, the only guys who need metric are the guys doing the layout. So sometimes they might need to convert. You know, I, and, and it, it's weird on, on big, big jobs, you're going to have more metric. Okay. Cause uh, it's just easier to work in metric, but, uh, I would just, if it, if, if it's giving you numbers in metric, just use a metric tape and, and use metric. Like why, why convert to imperial, to imperial? metric is so, so much easier to work with. <laughs> um, I don't understand why we don't all use metric to be honest, but, um, it is what it is. So. <laughs> But I get it. We're like we're wired. Like we're wired. Like I, like uh, I, I used to know all the conversions. So I think one meter or um, what's the conversion? So a meter to f like so one meter is three point two eight one feet. Um, like I can look like four hundred meters, sixteen inches. Okay. Uh, um, it's just it's just kind of wired in my in my brain. Okay. So lots of do it like that's from estimating big jobs and just doing lots of layout and stuff like that, you know? One of the things that we've been, I've done a few of are the security cages for um, um, like, you know, uh, hemp, hemp stores, like weed stores, uh, banks, uh, all these things that use um, quarter inch uh, graded aluminum. Or yeah, sorry, not aluminum, but metal mesh, sorry. Oh yeah, check this out. So this year, I wanted to show you guys, this is an expansion beam, okay? So this is where, this is the kind of, of trim tech that goes inside of, of your expansion joints, right? So the, this part, and you can, you can also get this fire rated. So it's a lot, very expensive to get it fire rated, but this is what goes in your expansion joints. You can put it, you can have expansion joints um, horizontal or vertical, my bad, sorry, vertical and horizontal, okay? But that's an expansion bead. Um, but yeah, so when you're installing this uh, quarter inch uh, extruded, okay, the, you sometimes they want you to use rivets. So uh, that's why I actually, that's when I bought that drill. Cause you want, you got a pre-drill, okay, your hole for the rivet. And then I use an air gun, an air riveter to, to it's just so much easier. You don't want to, you I want, you will go through so many hand, hand, like guns, like you want to, you want to use the air one. Okay. But yeah, you, you can get one at princess auto for a hundred bucks or 50 bucks. Sorry. Uh, uh, and it, it'll, it'll do thousands of them. I believe not. No, no, you, you got to do the whole program. So you got to do the whole, uh, interior systems mechanic program to get your red seal. Okay. Um, you can't just be a drywaller. No, you, you gotta be, you gotta get your full, uh, ISM, I think for that. I'm pretty, yeah. And you can't get a red seal for drywall. No. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Chris, the, the safety thing, the safety hazards. That's right. But, um, going to, if you look back, uh, I've up, I re-uploaded, oh, now playing. Uh, I don't, I just want to shut that off. Okay. Uh, when I'm going to have this new logo, it's that live, live remastered. Okay. That means I've taken a, a live stream and I've remastered it. Okay. I've cut out the fat. I've improved the audio. The, the video is always better too. And then it's only, I've cut out everything that's not talking about the subject. Okay. So it's just straight talk about that subject. Uh, like this blueprint one, uh, layout one, it's really good. It's an hour and 15 minutes of just pure gold information. So, yeah.